the top reason your computer is slow and what to do about it. Hi everyone, I'm Leo Notenboom for askleo.com where slow computers have been a problem for folks since I started doing this back in 2003. You know, aside from malware, I would call slow computers one of the most common concerns that people bring to me. Uh, their computer has slowed down either suddenly or over time, and it's just not keeping up with what they need to do. There are many reasons that there can be slow computers, and I will definitely be covering some of those in future videos. However, I want to address what I consider to be the number one reason that computers end up slowing, particularly if they end up getting slower and slower and slower over time. Too much software. It really is that simple. When I run into folks' computers that are experiencing a slowdown problem, one of the first things I do is I go take a look at what kind of software they have installed and how much of it. What I usually find is, for lack of a better term, buckets of software and software that they didn't even realize was there, software that they didn't know, software that they're no longer using, maybe software that they tried at one point and never ever uninstalled. The fact is though, uninstalling may be what you need to do. Here's the issue. It shouldn't hurt to install software. Seriously, installing software on your machine really is all about copying files to your hard disk, maybe setting up some registry entries, maybe configuring a few defaults. But after the installation is done, that's it. That should be it. The software is installed, it's on your computer and ready to use, and that should be all of it, except when it's not. One of the things that a lot of software packages install are software that start when you log in to Windows. So when you log in, this software application may very well have a little helper utility that it needs to run or decides that it wants to run every time you log in and it's always running in the background. By itself, it's probably not that big a deal. It's probably not doing all that much. The problem comes in over time when you install additional packages and more and more and more of them all include these little utilities that are always running and always taking resources and always, always, always around. Eventually, all of those little utilities add up to something significant and they can also end up taking resources away from the stuff you really want to do. Now, to be fair, software that starts when you log into Windows isn't bad by itself. There are reasons why you might want something like that. A great example is after you install Dropbox, yeah, the Dropbox software needs to be running all the time in order to perform the task that you're asking it to perform. It's the nature of Dropbox. It's the nature of OneDrive. It's the nature of Google Drive. That's the kinds of service they provide require that they have a component that's running all the time. On the other hand, many years ago, Microsoft Office used to install something that they called the Microsoft Office Quick Launch Bar, which sounds impressive. It's kind of interesting, except it was really doing nothing useful. Its job, by running all the time was to keep Microsoft Office ready so that when you ran Microsoft Word, for example, it came up a little quicker. The cost, of course, was that this application was running all the time. And if you only ran Microsoft Office applications once a week or once a month, well, the whole thing running all the time just didn't make any sense. They eventually removed that component from Office. But the point is that that's a great example of what some applications will sometimes try to do by installing something that runs all the time. They try to make their application look better at the cost of some of the other applications that are running on your machine. So what do you do about this? Well, it's a multi-step approach, but first on the list, don't install software you don't need. There are people that want to try everything. I kind of sort of get that because I'm kind of sort of that way myself. But by and large, 
chances are you may not need everything that you're installing. At least hold it to a higher standard. Definitely make sure that you really want whatever it is you're about to install to try out. And if you're at all uncertain, don't. Just don't. In the long run, you'll be better for it. Uninstall software you don't use. This one's really easy to overlook. You do install something, you do use it for a while, and for whatever reason, you stop using it. Maybe the need goes away, maybe it's replaced by a different application that solves the same problem, whatever. Point is that you've got this application installed on your machine that you no longer use. So, uninstall it, get rid of it. If it has a run all the time component, that'll get uninstalled as well, and it'll be one less thing running all the time. Even if it doesn't have one of those components, it's one less thing to slow down your machine, either by taking up disk space or who knows whatever else. Turn off auto start options. This is one of those cases where, yeah, there are applications that you will have installed on your machine that you want to keep installed on your machine that you'll want to turn off. I'll show you in a minute one place to look for exactly that. Review what's in the notification area. Let's go ahead and look at Windows and some of the things I've been talking about here. The, this is Windows 10 Home. I'm running the Settings app and we'll go and look in Apps. This is a list of the software that's installed on your machine. Since this is a relatively clean installation of Windows 10, it will show you the kinds of things that will get pre-installed on your machine. This is relatively clean. At this point, if you want, you can, for a lot of these things, uninstall the components that you don't want. That's fine, that's up to you. Most of these are not big offenders in terms of having applications or having components that run all the time. Nonetheless, they may take up clutter elsewhere, like in your start menu where you don't wanna see them. So it's a great idea to come in through here and just sort of, for the applications you know you don't use, don't need, go ahead, hit uninstall, it'll get removed and it's just not a problem. If you're uncertain, don't. It's the safest thing to do. Just don't uninstall unless you're certain you don't need something. But for example, um, what did I just see come by here? Uh, Paint 3D. I never use Paint 3D. So we'll just go ahead and uninstall Paint 3D. There's simply no reason to have it around. Now, this, as I said, is a clean install of Windows 10. I haven't done a lot to this system. It's my example machine. What I'm going to show you next is actually the same settings in my primary machine, the machine that is currently um, running my video recording software and, and actually handling the heavy lifting behind creating the video that you're looking at. And you can see here that, yeah, I've got a lot of things installed. Um, this is a very, very long list of software that's installed on my machine. Now, I am not necessarily one to install things just for the fun of it. So there's actually a relatively good reason for almost everything on this list. Not always. For example, I don't necessarily need Xbox controllers and that kind of stuff. But the bottom line is that I do think twice before I install software, and I definitely do go through and uninstall software. But you definitely want to have the software that you use. It just makes sense. If you're using something, leave it installed. That's okay. It's the stuff that you don't need that you want to get rid of. If we go back to my Windows 10 home system, there were two things that I suggested you look at. One was auto start options. If we go to task manager, I've simply right clicked on the clock. I'll click on task manager and then click on startup. You can see that there are a number of things that are here. Cortana, hide console, Microsoft OneDrive, etc., Skype. These are all, almost all of them are enabled. You'll notice though that I've disabled Cortana. You can do that. That will prevent Cortana from running automatically on startup, even without uninstalling her. Same thing for Skype. Skype is problematic. So I'm just right clicking on it. I will disable Skype because I don't want to use Skype in my example machine. The other things that are here, yeah, I kind of sort of want them. So I'm going to leave them alone. As you can imagine, the more software you have installed on your machine, the longer this list will be. Same rule of thumb, if you know that you don't need something, feel free to disable it. It's very hard to damage anything. If you're not sure, probably leave it alone. You can experiment, it's probably safe, but 
it's probably safer to leave it alone because it'll probably affect the functionality of something else on your machine. Now, the other thing I mentioned earlier was checking the notification area. The notification area is the lower right hand part of the taskbar. In other words, it's this area down here. Most importantly is the show hidden icons. Each of these icons represent software running on your machine. This is another clue for the kinds of things that you might want to consider whether or not you really need, whether or not they need to be running all the time or whether or not they need to be uninstalled. Skype, for example, well, I disabled its automatic startup, but it's still running. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on it and say quit Skype. Now, when I hit this show hidden icons again, the Skype icon is gone and that's because it's no longer running. This is folding at home. I'm currently not running folding at home, so I'm going to go ahead and quit that. And that would be something, for example, that I might now uninstall, having recognized that it's on my machine and that it was in fact running all the time. The other two icons here, this one is actually uh, uh, utilities associated with my virtual machine that I'm going to leave. And Windows Defender, of course, is not something that you want to turn off. You want to have your security software running at all times. There's Microsoft OneDrive. Same idea. If you use OneDrive, it is something you want to have running all the time. If you don't use OneDrive, well, you can disable it, you can turn it off, and you cannot have it running all the time. But when it comes to slow machines, by far, literally by far, the number one reason that machines slow down over time is simply that they're trying to do too much. And by do too much, that is often simply nothing more than having too much software installed and running at the same time. For the article on which this video was based, for updates, for links, for comments, visit askleo.com slash 125530. I'm Leo Notenboom. This is askleo.com. Hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching.